this week on the show. Storytelling is everything. Right. It's, it's the storytelling and then it's marketing, advertising, filmmaking, whatever, but you need a story. Vittorio Rossi says as much himself. That's the whole film almost, is he says, just tell a story. Justin Mulfatti. I could apply that to myself and everyone could apply that type of discipline to whatever it is they want to do. Mm. You know, he would find the time in a day, he would do all the research and even if you do something and you know it won't be released, it doesn't matter because you're just make you're working those muscles, you're making yourself better. And I learned that from him. Laura Ashley Polisena, directors of the world's a stage, starring playwright Vittorio Rossi. So there was a little bit of a lineup. People were were congratulating Martin Scorsese and now it's my turn and and she goes, I'll never forget this. She goes, um, um, Marty, uh, I want to introduce you to Vittorio. And before she was able to finish her sentence, she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you're the guy from Montreal. I, I said, my God, how, you know, it was, yeah, Melanie was telling me about you. Uh, so we start this quick conversation. There was lots of Italians up there. And I said, um, uh, I couple hundred thousand I guess yeah we were the <laughs> we, we did the that on this one and Vicky and Carlo Google just Google everything how to blank yeah uh, See, I don't consider myself a, an artist Gabe I'll just say like you've had you've interviewed artists on this show all the time yeah. I, I don't consider myself an artist so Justin let's just go back to that so you don't consider yourself an artist no, so we'll expand <laughs> on, on that yeah what do you think uh, uh, Laura is Justin an artist Yes, they were a little annoyed because I love Kevin Smith so much, the filmmaker, right. that yeah. I just kept like pestering them with like Kevin. I know he went there for like a semester and I kept pestering them with questions about him and they were just like, okay, do you want to go to film school or do you just love Kevin Smith? <laughs> you know, right. but uh, he's an inspiration to me and he didn't yeah. go to film school and you know, Quentin Tarantino did I go to film school and a lot it's the the vibe is like very 50-50. And it was beautiful, honestly. It is personal to us. It is personal to us. It's it's our culture. Yeah. You know? It's uh, it's the one thing we can claim and mm. feel comfortable claiming as that we're just a, a part of it. So I love giving back to my Italian community as as much as I could and I go, this is this will be my gift to them, if anything. That's how I see it, honestly. Let's talk to Justin Mulfatti and Laura Ashley Polisenna on the Very Creative Podcast. Justin Mulfatti, Laura Ashley Polisena, how are you? Good. Doing great. I won't lie to the audience. We've been trying three times to say those names. And Justin, uh, I won't say to you, but you're the problem. <laughs> what else is new? Uh, no. Introduce yourselves to everyone. Uh, Laura. So I'm... Um, uh, a filmmaker, aspiring filmmaker. I've usually done producing. Uh, and this is my first feature film documentary that I co-produced with Justin. Go ahead, Justin. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> I am fun. a graduate of communication <laughs> studies. Um, so I'm working right now as a writer in editorial kind of capacity. Right. And this uh, project that we're gonna talk about today was made in uh, our spare time, essentially. Um, it's more of a passion project, um, but yeah, I'm. Uh, I love tinkering with all kinds of stuff. Music. I love. I love music collection anyway. Um, if video is a sort of a new thing for me, but it's. Uh, it comes naturally, I guess. Right. When you're a person that likes to tinker around with different kinds of media, so I won't speak for you, Laura. We're both. I know for both media lovers, but I, that's how I position. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, so. Can you introduce the project to everyone? What is it about? What's the name? Uh, it's a documentary, right? Right. So the project is about um, a playwright, a local playwright called named Vittorio Rossi. If you haven't heard about him, you might hear about him more uh, now or in the next couple of months. The project interviews him at the Casa d'Italia, the famous building uh, in Montreal. It talks about his life and his career. Along the way, we learn a bit about um, culture, values, his values, uh, his, his process. Um, the film is a 70-minute real journey into his mind, or at least his, uh, his creative mind and his, uh, his professional process. 
Yeah, I've seen the, the documentary, uh, and there's a lot of interesting stuff. As a writer, I, I'm so like pumped about learning about this, about this guy. And there's, uh, he talks about Al Pacino, he talks about Martin Scorsese, uh, and him meeting Martin Scorsese, which uh, was unbelievable. Uh, the the way he told it and the story itself. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a really good documentary uh, about. A local playwright uh, that kind of is made it. Uh, would you say you kind of made it, or he's a know? master storyteller? Yeah. First of all, uh, you, you nailed it. That's the one of the best parts right. of this movie. He's just yeah. a great storyteller. He name drops all those people, but they're good stories. Yeah, yeah. has he made I it, Laura? I think that's the great thing. Yeah, I'd yeah. say so. I'd say he's uh, reached the bar and he's a success in his own right. I mean, he Absolutely. made the right contacts and this documentary kind of explores that, how he went about that and how he became the artist that he is today and what differentiates him from other writers. So, yeah, I'd say so for sure. Right. And uh, he does talk about a little bit what sex success means to him and, uh, uh the different kind of success he talks about how the french quebecois uh, did like the the director he talks about denis Villeneuve. he talks about jean-marc valet and how kind of the english people are not uh given the same chances a little bit and uh i think he he would you say he, he puts himself in that basket that he doesn't see himself like uh, they didn't give him that chance his rise to fame occurred many years ago. Right. He's having a resurgence now, restaging a lot of his plays, which are which were beloved and today all will reach new generations. Right. Back then, it was a problem. There was a big divide between English and French. He ended up finding a way through that by targeting the ethnic communities, right. Italians and other people. Um, we know that his is his father dealt with the French English divide when his uh, daughter was refused access into uh, French schooling. So yeah. there, there's a lot of those themes coming in. Right. These are, these are old themes. We still find relevance yeah. today as yeah, well. It's so that's very relevant about. today. It's, it's a very Montreal film. I will say that it is yeah, local he, flavor for sure. He does address the, you know, language and culture uh, to answer your question, Gabriel, I I don't know how he feels about that. Right. He but did just, you sense that he felt that way? I I guess he just spoke from his own experience and right. felt as though yeah he he could speak for Italian Canadians and that's not really a big population. So yeah, maybe he could have been or could still reach a bigger audience if he had that Franco community involved. Right. So, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not huge on the playwriting uh, in the, in the drama scene, the local theater scene. I haven't seen many plays. I saw his play and I loved it. And I figured I want to talk to him. That's how this started. But, but he's right in term of, uh, I can't name the, the playwright, but uh, there's many pl playwrights that are French Quebecois that like when I was studying in Toronto, we were still studying those people from Montreal and okay. like in the U S too, uh, you hear about the Quebecois French playwrights, but you don't really hear about the, the ones from Montreal or the ones from Canada. I think that's what he was getting at a little bit. So I, yeah. I found that really interesting. You got to uh, look yeah. to the centaur. And and then a couple other smaller theater houses, but that's Michel Tremblay. That's the the playwright I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Centaur would be the mecca of of English language theater in this city, and right. and that's where it's all happening. Um, this time around, he decided to part ways with them. Right. The results were mixed. He, he's very yeah. honest about that. Yeah. So yeah. the theater scene is very multifaceted in this city for sure. Yeah, I, I love it. Honestly, he was so honest. And like you said, he's a master storyteller and that that's why it works because people that get interviewed and don't, don't talk and don't tell stories are kind of boring. And it's, it's not, it wouldn't make a great movie. Honestly, we hit the jackpot. I think yeah. Yeah. we really did. Right, Laura. I yeah. mean, we, we were, we met him before the interview. I don't know. I don't want to jump ahead. 
Um, no, well, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to yeah. that. But I, I first want to talk to uh, each one of you. So, Laura, did you always want to make films and how, yeah, growing up? Yeah, I guess so. I've always been inspired. Uh, love storytelling as well. Uh, I'm, I'm more visual. I won't say I won't sit here and say I'm a writer or anything. I'm definitely more visual, right. and uh, I like character studies a lot. Uh, I didn't study film. I didn't want to go to film school. I did think of applying to Vancouver Film School way back when I was in high school, but then I just took a step back and I was like, you know what? Realistically, what are the chances? What are the odds? What's what's going on here? You know. So what I did was I did call Vancouver Film School and I just asked them every question I had to ask them and finally decided not to go. I kind of did just... they call you back all the time? They did that for me. They, they did, but I think at one point they were getting... <laughs> they were a little annoyed because I love Kevin Smith so much, the filmmaker, right. that yeah. I just kept like pestering them with like Kevin. I know he went there for like a semester and I kept pestering them with questions about him. And they were just like, okay, do you want to go to film school or do you just love Kevin Smith? <laughs> you know? right. But uh, he's an inspiration to me and he didn't yeah. go to film school. And, you know, Quentin Tarantino didn't go to film school. And a lot, it's, yeah. the, the divide is like very 50-50, like Martin Scorsese did. And, you know, you could really split hairs between who did and who didn't. And then you have to make your own decision. So, yeah, I agree with that. Like uh, when I... Yeah. I, rec I was thinking of applying to Vancouver Film School too. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's a number you can call or something or they call you or I don't know how it works. Yeah. But I remember a call with them and the guy was just, I, I was like, oh, I'm considering university and this. And he was like, you don't have to go to university, blah, blah, blah. He was all making this argument of mm -hmm. like how bad university is. Uh, and uh, yeah, that just turned me off and i was like i saw what he was doing but that can like influence a lot of people into like not going to university or just going to film school like yeah right and then you ask yourself well if i don't know x amount of graduates are graduating where are their movies you know yeah. so i just i right. went to cjet went to university met justin at cjet uh studied advertising there very happy with it but i i still love cinema and i taught myself cinema and i did internships in casting or extras casting whatever i could get my hands on to just learn myself i didn't want to be in a room where somebody was telling me that oh you have to watch citizen kane for this this and this reason i wanted to yeah. just discover that for myself because I know the filmmaker making that probably, most probably didn't have a professor telling him, oh, you yeah. got to watch whatever movie. So I'm not saying what I did is the right thing, but that's the decision I made. I don't think there's a right you know? thing. No, there, I don't think there is. Um, if I could go back, film school it would be cool because you could meet your some peers there, other people that like also love film and you have something in common with them it's hard to meet people out in the real world that like share a passion that's so strong mm. but uh yeah i mean i i did anyway it took me a couple of years i got into producing a little bit produced a couple of short films uh some are better than others did one recently did a feature that i i wrote the story for it didn't write the dialogue i did write the story mm. and uh, yeah, then Justin approached me with this idea for a documentary and I love documentaries a lot. So I was like, oh my God, let's do it. So yeah. that's where I come from. That's my background. Yeah. And I saw you, you worked a lot in casting, right? I, well, yeah, my internships were all in casting. Yeah. And talk a bit about that. Yeah, that was cool. Actually, I uh, cold called the company and they were like, oh, you're interested? And I said, yeah, I'll come in for free. I just want to learn. This was like back when I was like 19 or 20 years old. So I would go in, you know, uh, we'd go down the sheet, read with the actors, and uh, you get a lot of insight on that other side of the table. A lot of people are usually the ones performing, but I get to see what's 
going on and uh, not so much the decision making process, but what goes on in that space between the actors coming into right. the room and leaving and what's said about it. And I see the way actors prepare. So it's yeah. sort of like I've never acted myself, but after so what did that teach you about the industry? Uh, a lot of things like you could be a really talented actor, but if you're partnered in a scene, let's say you're cast, uh, maybe it's different for men, but for women, usually we want women shorter than men in a couple. If you have a boyfriend and girlfriend and the guy is five, eight, guess what? The girl probably has to be five, like look shorter than five, eight. So if you're five, nine and you're a great actress, it doesn't matter. Right. Like it's more, there's like some little physical stuff like that, That's but true. yeah, but not all of it. Um, another one is like just seeing the, the way different actors would prepare for the same role, like 20 people would come in and do it all totally differently. And I would think it's like one version is great. Somebody else would be like, no, I think the director's looking for this. And then it's right. like, well, none of us are the director. So we got to send both into the producer. It's like, oh, uh, there's so much, there's just like so much that goes into decision-making. And I wish I could, I could just tell, I want to tell actors, if you don't get a part, doesn't mean you're a bad actor. It's just so many things come into it. Maybe it's because your eyes are blue, you know, maybe it's your haircut, maybe it's your height, you know, it's honestly keep acting, keep auditioning and eventually you'll find the right part. Like people are meant to get the parts that they do. I believe in that, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, auditioning, it's a whole, it's an art in itself. You have to, if you love acting, go into it as if you're acting, you know, Oh, I get to act for 15 minutes. Don't think yeah. of it as a, you know, oh, this is going to make or break my career. Don't, I wouldn't yeah. think of it that way. That's true. That's true. I've been to a lot of auditions as an actor and uh, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. You're always like thinking, Oh, is this <laughs> going to make or break my career? Like, that, that is exactly it. Uh, yeah. And you're, you're not thinking about, having fun and uh, doing what you love. And that's really cool that you said that, honestly, for actors listening. Yeah, because you're going into it for that. Trust me, the casting directors on the other side aren't thinking right. about you. They're thinking, where are they going to go have lunch? You know, I mean, <laughs> just, <laughs> but it's true. That's true. A casting director, while I was auditioning, before I was auditioning, I was in the room already. And he was like, uh, as St. Hubert arrived or something, like, <laughs> he was like, that's uh, for, for the American friends or all over the world listening, that's a chicken place. But uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy. Nothing stays buried forever, especially not the past. Yesterday is Not Yet Gone, a mystery novel by Gabriel Vega host of the Very Creative Podcast. Available now. Paperback and digital. GabrielVega.com. Buy it now. So, Justin, what about you? Uh, did you always want to make film, or were you artistic as a child? So, How did well, it start? Advertising was my first love, really. I grew up watching uh -huh. commercials. So, I don't know if you had many you people. You were a madman guy. Yeah, I was a mad, yeah. <laughs> I read the book that was that that the show was based on, so I never watched My the show, show, but I know what it's about. And uh, yeah, so it's it's that's how that's how things started. I'm looking, uh, you know, high you school. You should learning. watch it, honestly. Oh yeah, no, I've seen some episodes. It's it's okay. amazing. It's great. That's exactly how it was like. Yeah. Um, after high school, I'm like, okay, what what do I do? The the, the lack of um, advertising schools you can call it or courses right. in montreal is 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 pretty bad actually yeah um, that's what i was gonna say what do you do to get into advertising what do you do? Uh, good question i don't know so good thing i found uh, champlain college in saint lambert in longueuil was offering um an advertising management um three-year diploma course right i went for that because i wasn't that good at math so i couldn't go to business school and do the calculus I okay. couldn't do it. That's and that's a lot of people that went to that program kind of said the, the same thing. I'm going to learn about business and marketing, but from a creative side of things, from a branding marketing side, not so much from a data analytics or whatever it is you learn in um, yeah. in business school. Um, so we did that for three years with with Laura, 
Uh, it was a great time. After that, I said, okay, now what? <laughs> uh, we did our internship at, at the end of the three years. Everyone had to do one. Uh, I did mine. It was, it was okay. It wasn't in a place that I wanted to be or loved to be uh, personally. Not that it's a bad place. I just didn't, didn't resonate with me. Then I realized, okay, um, communication studies is a thing. Um, right. And reading that description for that program, oh, yeah, that's me, 100%. I knew all my life. If there was a program that involved communications, I'd want to do it. I always would imitate people on TV, all the, the, the news anchors and the sportscasters and all that. Uh, I wanted to learn about the media, uh, what goes on behind the scenes, um, right. all that stuff. It wasn't bad overall. It was a good program. I, I did it, finished it. Uh, I made a short documentary in there. Uh, we did a lot of projects. Um, oh, you did? Focused. What was the documentary about? It was a 10-minute documentary, similar to, to this one, actually, in oh, terms right. of, in terms of uh, profiling a person. I was with a great team, though. Um, but I helped research the question. Are you saying Laura is not a great team? <laughs> I'm saying I didn't do it alone. <laughs> You oh, can't yeah. do alone. oh my god <laughs> just to make sure <laughs> i was with a great team because because in filmmaking geez y you can't do it alone and what was the documentary about uh, yeah so uh, like in communication studies we we had to we, i went i took a documentary class we watched a ton of documentaries in that class learned a lot about what goes into one how to make a good one um right. and our and our project was to make one ourselves yeah. um one of the person one of the people on our team knew had connections to uh the man that runs the dollar cinema which is in the mall that's near the orange julep okay so it's the cinema that runs older films right. uh, okay. films that aren't that are slightly before the ones that are right now in, in major theaters the, the uh, what's it called second run laura or i actually don't know <laughs> I'm sorry. I did watch your documentary. I just yeah, don't. no, no. It's just it, it's so he shows older films, so it's like very cheap to go there. But you're seeing a did, film that was already, that's already been out for a, a few months. Did he have a great team, Laura? Uh, on his short film, yes, yes, okay. he did. <laughs> on this one, <laughs> we're not. Sure. Um, I I wouldn't. I'd say we're probably the same. We're at just as good. <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> All stars? Are you kidding me? We were. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we were. We'll get yeah. to that. We'll okay. get to that. Yeah. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> it's not. It's not just me and Laura. That's right. There. There's two other people that really contributed a lot, and are our right. and our partners definitely. Just, um, just to make sure for from your last statement. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy at the Dollar Cinema is an interesting character. He doesn't like change. Um, he kind of, everybody knows him. If you know the place, you know him, he runs it. He always, he works behind the counter. It's just amazing. Like 10 minute look into a typical day at the dollar cinema. Well, right. typical. I mean, that day they were getting a new projector in. So we, we, during our shoot, we're helping them deliver the whole thing. It's crazy. It, yeah. You couldn't have written it better. <laughs> um, and you just, you just get the sense of who he is. Um, it's on my LinkedIn page under projects. If you want to take a look, uh, it's, it's really interesting. <laughs> And I go, you know, yeah. I, I enjoyed that. I Can enjoyed everyone coming up with find it? questions. Yeah, on my LinkedIn okay, page. Yeah. Tell, tell them what it's called, Justin. It's called Bernie's World. There you go. <laughs> Bernie's World. That's good. Uh, yeah, it's on, there's a link to it. Um, so what happened after that? Um, graduated from communication studies, and I worked in an um, event marketing agency. Writing, doing what I wanted to do uh, since the beginning of this whole thing was write in, for a marketing context, yeah. write, write advertising copy, essentially. Yeah. And the great thing about Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn today is that those social media platforms exist and they gave me a job. <laughs> those, right? I could now, my, my, my full-time job could be doing social media for a, um, an association. Right. And, and crafting a, a, a month's worth of tweets. Yeah. And creating images for them and that kind of thing. So you learn how to communicate um, on that audience, on that to that audience, on that platform. Like yeah. I said, without those social media platforms, <laughs> whether you like them or not, they're giving people jobs. <laughs> people talk have about, to write uh, those tweets. Talk about marketing a little bit. What, uh, what have you learned from that? What do people want to hear? Or what is, yeah. You know, yeah, it, it's, it's, just because you love social media doesn't mean you can uh, craft good tweets for a business standpoint, I guess. Uh, you got to have a concise, clear message. 
got to have some sort of an aptitude for writing. Um, you can't make any mistakes in terms of grammar. You got to have that set. Um, for people that want to get into it, you know, start small, prove yeah. yourself, and eventually someone might give you a chance. I was lucky that, you know, the, the person that ran the event marketing agency gave me a chance in the beginning. I started as an internship uh, during the communication studies at Concordia, and I stayed there for a few years. Yeah. Has it taught you a little bit about storytelling or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Marketing is all about storytelling. Storytelling yeah. is everything. Right. It's, it's the storytelling, and then it's marketing, advertising, filmmaking, whatever, but you need a story. Vittorio Rossi says as much himself. He, he, yeah. That's the whole film, almost, is he says, just tell a story. Yeah. And then he goes on to talk about um, uh, Bruce Springsteen and how his messaging in his songs is a simple, clear story that people can relate to. Yeah. So it's, you need that story. Even if you think there isn't one, there is one. Dig deeper and right. you'll see, oh, this, the, in marketing, you got to create a desire, right? For a product. Yeah. What, what is that? Get to the heart of it and then you'll right. have a good message. Right. That's cool. Yeah. So how do you find your way? I, th I know that Justin had the idea for the film. So how did you find your way to that? And uh, yeah, I enjoyed. So after Bernie's world, I said, you know, I love com coming up with interview questions, doing my research. Right. I, I looked at everything about Bernie in Bernie's world. I looked at everything about his life. I read every article that was written about him to, to know, okay, well, what has he already said so that I can come into the interview one step ahead? And ask him the follow up to that because we don't want to redo the same story, yeah. same film. We want to get to something deeper. And then you had Victoria on your show a cup of in a previous episode. Yeah, Victoria D. Wu. Yeah. Yeah. She's my girlfriend. She took me to see the play, uh, um, The Chain, which was restaged at McGill in 2019. Right. She and then I said, okay. This, this guy, whoever he is, Mr. Rossi, I got to get in touch with him. Let me take a shot in the dark and just see if... Were you blown away by the, the play or what happened? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got to see it. it. It's coming soon, apparently, on video on demand. Okay. So people should check that out. Right. Because... Um, On the chain. Yeah. Raw, dramatic. And if you're Italian... It's like a no-brainer. You have to see it. You have to yeah. see it. It's but like I, watching your own family fighting in front of you. I think it applies to like, you know, Portuguese, mm -hmm. Spanish, like anyone. I think like just that family, the themes of family and the way they communicate with each other, just it applies to everyone though. Absolutely. Okay. So there's I universal themes Italian in there. To see it. Sorry? No, no, I don't of course know. not. No. But but you, are, you, owe, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to see it if you are. Because there's Italian okay. in it, and you, you'll 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 really like it for sure. Yeah. So you were blown away by the play, and then what happened? You. I I so I knew from CJ that Laura was a huge film buff. So if anybody could help me initially in the early stages, it would be her. She was on board with with contacting him. So I emailed him. You know, I sent him an email. Right. To, with the address that I found online, and uh, geez, yeah. he answered. We go okay. You know, now we have something. I can't believe that he answered and he said, sure, he'd love to meet us. It was wow. him, not his agent, right? It was, it was him. It was him. So then we had like a mock interview with him. We met him uh, downtown, right? And just asked him like who he was. We introduced ourselves, how we know each other. And we told him what we wanted to do because what we noticed was maybe he was missing some marketing yeah. so and maybe we could offer that that was kind of the approach that we took uh, marketing to his play yeah marketing for his plays his playwriting you know his upcoming yeah. plays and because uh, we know that's hard like finding an audience yeah. for an english and you play. know marketing. yeah so that's kind of how yeah. we approached him and we asked Genius. him yeah. yeah and he was on board he was like yeah cool i'll do that and you know it was kind of an exchange where he gets marketing and we get experience. So we were super happy with it. We booked a day, Justin found a location at Casa d'Italia to stage the interview. And, and the happened. perfect location too. Yeah. Gabe, you should, you should have, I wish you were there for that first interview though. 
in the coffee shop. He's telling the stories in the same way that he said them in the on on film. Really? And I'm like, we Laura and I our, our jaws dropped thinking this guy met Scorsese. This guy, all these stories he's telling. Zemeckis, like, like all yeah, these directors. Just name dropping. I'm like, yeah. wow, this is so interesting. And he's on yeah. board. I can't. So I, I'm like, so <laughs> in the interview we said, you better retell those stories again because they're just so good. The way he right. tells them, and it was like he he had our attention the entire time, and the time flew by. So there was a little bit of a lineup. People were were congratulating Martin Scorsese, and now it's my turn. And and she goes, I'll never forget this. She goes, um, um, Marty, uh, I want to introduce you to Vittorio. And before she was able to finish her sentence, she goes, Oh yeah, yeah, you're the guy from Montreal. I. I said, my God, how, you know, he goes, yeah, Melanie was telling me about you. Uh, so we start this quick conversation. There was lots of Italians up there. And I said, um, uh, I a couple hundred thousand, I guess. Yeah. So that's cool. It's cool. You know, and, and all the while I'm thinking, oh my God, how can I extend this conversation? And then I realized, wait a minute, somebody who had just performed in my one actors a couple of, a year earlier had two nice scenes in the movie. Say, we have something in common, Mr. Scorsese. He goes, what, besides being Italian? I go, yeah, we both worked with uh, Michael Imperioli. Oh, yeah, wonderful kid, eh, blah, blah, blah. So we were able to, you know, we were able to extend that conversation an extra minute. And then I said, oh, man, one more thing. And I just said, Mr. Scorsese, I just got to tell you, man, I love the way you use music in your films. And that really seemed to... Uh, well, he, he liked to hear that because I think he takes a lot of care uh, in the music he chooses for uh, his film. Was he excited yeah. about the, the film? How did he react to it at first? I think he was excited. I think at first he was kind of like, oh. Well, who are you guys? <laughs> who are you? But also, I mean, we visibly, like, we're clearly younger than, like, other yeah. people he's worked yeah. with. We're not exactly, like, veteran filmmakers. Uh, so to him, he's like, maybe I'm just helping these kids out with a project or a student film or whatever. I don't yeah. know exactly what, what he thought of us, but we really, we really proved ourselves. Right. At that point, yeah, we didn't have big plans for the film. We were just wanting to... You no. Know, do it like a hobby and make something and see where it goes. Get some experience. That's how it started with this podcast. And then I was really like into it. So yeah, that's great. That's how, yeah. that's how it works. You know, I was going to say that makes it less stressful, but still you were talking to somebody that you had to prove yourself to. And uh, yeah, yeah. Was, that might be a little scary too. Yeah. Well, honestly, I, I was intimidated before we met him, but as soon as we okay. met him, it was just so clear that he he's just like us. And we're like somebody who grew up, you know, with us, with his grandparents in Montreal, you right. know, kind of similar upbringing, went on to become an accomplished writer and meet Martin Scorsese and like have all these cool stories and right. direct plays in New York and all this really cool stuff. So I was just really inspired by that. After that, I was like really on board to just make this documentary and ask everything I wanted to ask. And he was so, he was so nice. You know, he, he didn't say no to anything and he, he gave us like really long drawn out answers. So I can't complain. We had good footage to work with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what was the, the filming process? How did you, you pick the theater and then you. Yeah. Well, we tried, you know, I wanted to, tr I try, I wanted to try the um, Leonardo da Vinci center, I think, right, Laura, that was yeah. a no go. Um, yeah. And thankfully uh, the Casa d'Italia, I got to thank them officially right now. They let us, they let us in for free. Okay. And that's, that's the kind of place that that is. And they're fulfilling their, 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 their mandate to help the Italian community in, in any way that they can and That's they great. did yeah. and yeah. what a place to be because we got those great segments in the th when, when i so, so we secured the location i go okay now i know i've been there before i know that outside the, the theater is the hall of memory it's called mm -hmm. so there's a cup there's a there's a short segment in the film where we get them out of the chair and walk around the building a bit to look at the right. exhibits to look at what's on the wall there's a lot of history in the building 
And I knew he, he would know his stuff about that because his plays deal exactly with the history of immigration, Italian immigration to Montreal. And that's the heart of it all. There couldn't yeah. be a better location. And yeah. so we, 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 got, we did get him out of his chair, walk around, follow him with a kind of on-location camera and, uh, and just, just see what he had to say. And what resonated the most out of all that was when he was in the Hall of Memory looking at the image of um, the arrests that were taking place after World War II, um, yeah. during World War II, when he, and Italy became an enemy of Canada. I thought, I thought that part was really great because it took a breather from the, him yeah. being in his seat. And uh, it, was, it was great for, for, for some time to just see him walk and yeah. just tell us about things he was seeing and remembering. And yeah. the, the film deals a lot about his past and also history and what he remembers. And that's also really great. Because uh, you and you see the Italian like heritage that he carries, and that's really cool. And I'm a huge nostalgia guy, so it's up my alley. I don't know if I can make a film that's not about remembering yeah. or media that's about remembering something. Every project I did in, in communication studies was about that theme, so that's yeah. I knew if I have to make a film, it's got to be about this, and and it, it worked out. Yeah. yeah. So what we did was we got our very small crew together and we That's shot this. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. yeah, that was it. Our, our good crew, our very good crew. <laughs> we got them together and... Uh, How many people? We were like five? Oh, tiny, yeah. That's great. Five people. And so uh, actually Justin's friend, Zach, who... Zach worked on Bernie's World, right? He did work on Bernie's World. He, I studied with him in, in communication studies. He was the guy behind the sound, held a he, boom mic the entire time. He brought all the equipment. You so know? nice of him. So huge thank you, Zachary Dyke. Yeah, thank you. And because so he did a lot. an expensive film to make. Actually, no. <laughs> and that's what's so impressive about it. But yeah, don't invest huge amounts of money into any that's my advice don't invest in stuff try to find a way try to make do yeah it, that's you you could still make a good product mm. so yeah no yeah that, that, that was that was the thing with that that was something i learned on this but just to get back to uh yeah the process of how we made it uh yeah so we got the crew together And then we shot it in like six hours or something. We first we did the interview segment, broke for lunch. We went, we got like Subway sandwiches, very modest. Then we did more <laughs> of the interview in the theater. And then we did the whole upstairs part where we see Vittorio walking around and we grabbed all that B footage because we knew we would need it. Right. So months later, I'm watching the footage. Uh, we had to sync everything, which was, I'm sure. Gabriel, you have to do this too. Like sinking is a nightmare. Yeah. Thank it's you, Laura, nightmare. for for <sighs> taking that. See, like I needed a part. I, like yeah. the, the amount of hours that went into this is huge. I it couldn't took, do it alone. Yeah. Nobody could yeah. do this alone. You need a good team. You, you need you need so at I, least somebody. Yeah. Explain to everyone what the sinking process was, because I yeah for for people that might be confused. Yeah. So for people who aren't aware, when you're filming something what you're filming and the mic are two separate entities. So when you're saying lights, camera, action, or however you're calling it, maybe the mic started before the camera. Maybe the camera started before the mic. And when you're putting everything together on the computer to watch it, you're going to want that sound to match the voice coming out of it in the picture. And you think it's simple, but it's not. And we didn't use a clapper. <laughs> We didn't use a clapper for this. And even if we did, I think we still would have had trouble syncing all this. And we, it was cut up into like nine parts. So we had to like really sync that sound to Vittorio's uh, picture, like him speaking perfectly. Once we had that, we had about like three and a half hours of footage. I liked it all, but we decided to cut it down. And then, you know, Justin was like, we might have something here. We could shape this into a story and from there it's basically sculpting okay let's put in more of this let's emphasize this let's take away these parts suddenly you have a linear story to work with and that's filmmaking thank you goodbye <laughs> <laughs>
Nothing stays buried forever, especially not the past. Yesterday is Not Yet Gone, a mystery novel by Gabriel Vega, host of the Very Creative Podcast. Available now, paperback and digital. GabrielVega.com. Buy it now. So once we kind of came up with a narrative and sunk all of that sound, we wanted to add more visuals, more B-roll. So Justin and another associate on this project, Carlo, they went and do some research on what would be the right visuals to use because Vittorio mentions the war. He mentions a lot of historical events that involved a little bit of research, fact checking, and we wanted to match the right visuals to go with it. We also reached out to Vittorio for some of his personal photos to use. He was so kind to give us so much material to work with. We added those into the documentary, sprinkled them a little bit everywhere. Right. You know, and then then you have that. Then you have to color everything and coloring is, it's hard. You know, you don't think about it when you're watching a movie. You think, you know, when you're filming the lighting, whatever you get, that's what you, like the result. But no, then you have to color everything. And but a color correct, yeah. Color correcting, I would say, is very hard. Like It's I, an art in, in itself. Like Zachary yeah. was known to say it's an art in itself. He's really good at that. He didn't do it for this movie, but he's good at that. And, and you could spend, you could do training just for that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It really opens your eyes to like all those key roles that don't really get recognition. All those credits, the, that, that role in a film, like, you know, yeah. 100 people. Yeah. We were the, <laughs> we, we did the, that on this one and Vicky and Carlo. Google, just Google everything. How to blank. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that, that's the thing when you don't have a lot of budget and a lot of crew members, you just have to do everything yourself. And yeah. it's like me on this podcast. I, yes, I host it and I ask questions, but after that I have footage and I have to edit it all my, myself. So it's yeah. a, I, I get it, you know? These yeah. days, you, you gotta be like a you, you you gotta know your stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and it's also years of practice. Uh, and it's also well, you uh, you had to learn it the, like right then and there. Oh man, it yeah. was a process. That can push you though. It did. Mm-hmm. There were like a bit of growing pains, but <laughs> but I mean, like we just never said no to each other right like we never right. said like he would ask me to do something i would do it then i would ask him to do something and he would do it and it, w- it would just like go back and forth and you know if you just yeah. catch someone that's like i don't feel like it oh why 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 can't you do it like if you catch someone like that you know then that's so important that you have a really good partnership like laura makes doesn't, doesn't make excuses you know then you yeah. have to get the job done and you find so you the time you know yeah. you just we, I don't take no for an answer and that's how stuff gets done. And it's yeah. like Justin said earlier, it's teamwork. You can't make a film by yourself. You can't, yeah. you, you cannot do no. it. It's never been done. So Justin, the question I have to ask you now is uh, when you asked Laura to do this film, did you know already that she was going to be that way, that she was going to be a great partner to you? Yes. And here's how I knew in CJEP, we participated in the, in a, it's called a case competition. I don't know if you've heard of this. No. So um, it's a competition that groups uh, together students from different colleges. Right. And, pro- and gives them a business case or a, a problem in which you have to, and you never saw it before. So you get the form, you read it, and you have to create a solution or some kind of um, presentation that, that talks to it and kind of solves the issue or propose a, a solution. Mm. So w- we wanted to strive for more at, in, in CJA, in that program, Laura and I, and we had other people too involved, but Laura and I basically um, entered into two case competitions in CJA. So since then I knew that she's a hard worker. Um, that's a whole other story. Those are crazy. It's I've never really knew hard. That. It's really hard to find those people though. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like you could meet so many people, but then, you know, you just need the right chemistry or yeah. you need someone who just understands where you're coming from. And in this case, 
somebody who wants to create something as badly as you do, you know, mm. and I'm some, I'm, we both have strengths and weaknesses. And I think where I, where I'm not as strong, he'll make up for it. For example, I'm someone who I'm not proud of this. It's changing now because I've worked with Justin. I'm someone who would probably cut corners if I was making this on my own. Oh, we can't get the sound right here. Whatever. Like I'd be like, it is what it is. But he was more like, no, the sound's got to be perfect. And so we kind of like learn from each other that way. Yeah. 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 The, the first time Justin talked to me about this project, uh, like I understood it in a way that uh, Laura, you did the filmmaking part and then Justin, you, you were like more the, the interviewer, but it's not that way, right? It's uh, you did everything, both of you. I think we both did everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. truly, um, Laura, Laura took the raw footage and synced the sound and kind of made it into something. Okay, here's what, here's what we have. And I started saying, cut this, cut that. Let's see where it goes. Eventually, I took over that footage, mm -hmm. and I added a lot of post-production kind of stuff. The photos that you see, the right. clips, um, gosh, the, the, the music. Yeah. I kind of added that, and I, and I took it, built on what she had already done. There was a lot to cut, and it's because the, the, one of the biggest weaknesses of this film is that we only talk to him. In a documentary, you need to be fair. You need to talk to others that might have a dissenting opinion. Whenever Vittorio starts talking negatively about a certain subject, I had to, as the, as the person, as the co-director, I was the gatekeeper to say, okay, do we let him say this or do we cut it? It's so important, mm -hmm. right? This, it's a yeah. monologue. So we want to know about his life. We want to know about his opinions. We don't want to push it too far, though, because he goes sure. far. Yeah. He's very raw in the film. He says some things sometimes that are like, oh, okay, that's, a, that's an opinion. And when right. he pushed it too far, we had we had to decide where to cut, because so, otherwise yeah. it's it's mansplaining basically. <laughs> like it's just you, you you can't have somebody do that. We or or we'd have to go if he's talking about somebody in a in a certain way, we'd have to go find that person and get their side of the story. But we didn't have the budget or time to really do that. This that's not what kind of film it is. It's about his life. So we you just gotta cut it at a certain point. So yeah, you mentioned that he was saying a monologue so was it an interview or how did it start and did you like ask him questions throughout the way or yeah, what was the a, process of that he's the kind of person that actually is very comfortable talking okay he's a great talker yeah. we don't have to i mean so yeah we gabe, can see that yeah so as you know gabe there, some people you might have to push them a bit and ask more follow-up questions other people yeah. sit back and, and let them do their thing vittorio is a man that can do his thing he's a master at this He's done interviews before as well. Yeah. You, you've seen them. you could Google Vittorio Rossi interviews. He's on PBS in the past. Yeah. He's on CTV News. Great interviews. He's done this before. He knows have you interviewed animated. people? Yeah. Have you even interviewed? Sorry to cut you off, Laura, but have you interviewed people that <laughs> weren't as responsive before that? I that just answered question and uh, no conversation or no like big story or yeah. Yeah, I interviewed one other person before and kind of like to prep for this project. And he was also very animated. And so I yeah. kind of like was like, I get it now. Right. What makes this person interesting is the way they approach questions, other people, life, the fact that they're so animated, the just their mm. excitement to talk yeah. to someone. And a lot of people aren't like that. Now I'm prepping sort of mm. prepping for another project where I'm being told, you know, so-and-so might not want to answer this question or yeah. we have to make sure they're comfortable. And I'm, I'm kind of like, Oh, but Vittorio was it like that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so I, do you, I, you don't feel like you have to, to push people sometimes. No, no. If you're asking the right questions and you know, by, I mean, push by respectfully, you know, but just to yeah. ask them questions that could lead to a longer answer or something like that. Not, not really, because we're, the, we're talking to the right people, right? You know, the person's already animated to begin with and comfortable to begin yeah. with. So we didn't have that problem. And I didn't have that problem in the past, but I could see how it would be a problem. Yeah. For some people.
one one of the tricks you learn in uh, in communications in the, the, that documentary class actually that that I took um, the the best parts of the interview are in those pauses where the person finishes their sentence but right. hasn't started the, the next one to me if honestly it's all in that pause what's unsaid mm. so because it's so much more than just words it's body language and whatever so That's um, true. so a, a tip for anybody that wants to interview somebody don't cut them off unless you because sorry you're, justin <laughs> i knew it i knew it you're guiding you're, it's your show you're guiding it and that's fine you ha you want to go in a certain direction but do not cut somebody off because they're about to give you something even better yeah in their next sentence until finally you say okay we've we, we've exhausted this let's move on but it's 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 because uh, so it's you, you're nervous going in your, your first time Doing an, doing an interview, if you're a journalist or if you're a filmmaker, it's nerve wracking. Yeah. So you're like, okay, uh, oh my god, no, they're they're silence. I got to say something, and you, and you just kind of in, interject as an interviewer. Don't do that. Don't. It, it's you have time. You got to get everything. You got to get the what what is unsaid. Yeah, but I also believe that you have to do a lot of interviews to we'll get what what it is, and I think acting helped me a lot with that because. Li acting is all about listening and even yes. sometimes i'm like the, the first few interviews that i did for this podcast i had to remember to listen to people because you're worrying about the lighting you're worrying about how the sound the microphone turned off or <laughs> earlier but uh, you're worrying about all this technical stuff if it's recording so uh you know it's uh you have to remember to listen to and uh, the stakes are high yeah we're in a we're, people we're are, are seeing you they're not seeing the lighting they're they're seeing you That's and they're right. seeing if you're listening and they're seeing if because uh, people repeat you have to make people repeat if you ask the same question over and over and you didn't listen you know Acting is answers. acting is reacting. You know that, right, Gabe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So <laughs> all suave. Yeah, I know that. Um. So oh, so so, <laughs> so so you know the, the, the you. stakes. <laughs> I hate you too, Gabe. So <laughs> the stakes are high. The stakes are high. We're in the Casa d'Italia because you know we don't have all day there. Vittorio is a busy guy. The stakes are high. We we're, you're trying to rush things, but like you said, you can't worry about that. You got to get through it the way you got to get through it. If it takes a few hours more, see if you can do it. But it it but yeah, it, it takes a lot of experience for sure. You know, yeah. you see all the people on on television. They've been doing it for a long time, and they know how to interview somebody. It it, it does. It's not something you learn overnight. It's 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 tough. Yeah. So did the interview go smoothly? Uh, was there any technical difficulties? No. What do you think, Laura? I think it went really smoothly. I think it went smoothly. We did have uh, one battery on our camera that kept dying, but we keep prepared and we brought two cameras to get two angles. Yeah. So that's where the experience comes in. Yeah, yeah, that's where you need some like more hands-on people that mm -hmm. know that and would say, no, you know what? I think we need, we definitely need more than two angles or we need the light to be this way, you know? Uh, so yeah, like technically I think it went very well. And in terms of the interview, it went well too. There were some questions that uh, we didn't get to until the very end because we were listening, like you said, listening very carefully and making sure we didn't want him to repeat himself. But I think it went really well, honestly. Mm -hmm. But that's because Victoria is also very, yeah. experienced in interviews yeah. you know yeah. had he been someone who was never interviewed it probably would have went differently i chose an industry i, I chose a um a field that back then anyway had no italians no italians weren't running theaters weren't producing uh, it was all francophone, French and English. So that starts to weigh on you. Um, and you think, well, if I'm going to survive doing this, it's best I start thinking other than Italian, which is what? Anglo, Canadian, whatever. Um, but then, you know, when you start to see the great works that were coming out of New York, forget Italy now, but just from New York, from people of Italian descent, 
you know, like Coppola and Scorsese and, and then the actors like Pacino and De Niro, uh, John Casal, uh, that starts to inspire you too and say, wait a minute, we're, we're just using uh, the English language to communicate these stories that we're writing or creating. So it wasn't until I started seeing those artists at work where, and coupled with the trip to Italy where I started to become very comfortable about writing. Yeah. So uh, what did you uh, learn from uh, Victoria? Victoria? Just, do you want to start? So, I mean, we, we already talked to them before, so we didn't learn a heck of a lot. You know, like we, we, we came in there prepared. We said, can you tell the Martin Scorsese story? Can yeah. you tell this? But story? overall, yeah. but overall, what did we learn? Oh my gosh. What didn't we learn from him? I mean, he, I, I learned the importance of um, how, how family values and how you were raised is so important. It follows you throughout your life. I, I, I'm on his wavelength because I love my Italian culture. I love it. I'm passionate about it. I, I speak Italian. I love my grandparents, all that stuff. I'm really into it. So I know, so I know what I want to, what, what my agenda is and what I want to yeah. chase and what, what I want to refine in my life. It's so rich, you know, right. it's such a rich experience to delve into a culture so deeply with him, um, being on the same wavelength, talking about things that we can, we can relate to and then expanding it to, to other people, to other cultures. And, and the Canadian question, who, who are we as Canadians? Yeah. Is that such a hard question to answer? And we, we don't get close to that in the film. We, we don't have an answer, but we have another piece of the puzzle, another piece right. of, the, of, the, of the mosaic yeah. of, that is Canada, right? So he's one little piece of that. And he's telling us his story of immigration and, 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 how, and how his, his, par his parents' experiences, he had a, a, a dilemma, right? Going forward, do I look back or do I look forward? That's mm -hmm. a huge part of this. So I'm like, okay, that's a good, you know, how does that apply to me? Like I learned so much and... <laughs> Just watching the footage over and over again, it sinks in, right, Laura? We we memorize, oh, the we memorize the all. We, I could we could quote the entire whatever he says. How it's, many times have so you watched it? Eighty times. I I want to say eighty. It's so funny. Wait, did we have this conversation already? No, I was gonna say eighty. I said eighty just like that. I was I was thinking I was like at least eighty times. <laughs> like we Why did we, we, say we quote him together. <laughs> we stop when he stops. We make the same jokes because we've seen it so often that's what happens in this stuff game i'm sure you've watched your pod you know when you do the listen interview. to them yeah in, in the oh, editing stage yeah. you listen to the thing 10 times but like but yeah. it's so much fun you asked me what i learned i didn't know italians were interned during world war ii i didn't know that either See? and it's stuff that i've 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 read about the topic i've heard about it okay fine the toro's trying to tell you guys did you know this happened and we're like mm. not really you know? We're like, no, there's no movie on it. Therefore, we don't know about it. See, and that's the yeah. thing. You have, you know, so we made, we made it our own. And, and we, we went, yeah. that's why we asked him about those questions. His plays, man, I, I, he's restaging his other plays. Go see them, people. <laughs> they're great. They're great works of art. And they talk, they, they speak to really important historical issues. Uh, yeah. One of them being that Italians were interned. Um, right here in Canada. And you think, well, that can't be, but it was. Um, so that's a, that's the kind of thing that, that you learn um, doing a movie like this. Yeah. What I learned from Vittorio was his discipline and just his discipline to write and the way he approaches writing. Because like I said, I, I know you're a writer and you're a writer too, Justin. So I, I just, I could apply that to myself and everyone could apply that type of discipline to whatever it is they want to do. Mm. You know, he would find the time in a day. He would do all the research. And even if you do something and you know it won't be released, it doesn't matter because you're just make you're working those muscles, you're making yourself better. And I learned that from him. Bef like before, I, I don't know, I was probably like, well, you need a good education and probably you need to be well first in something. But hearing him talk about it, hearing his approach was, it kind of motivated me a little bit more. Right. He's, he's mm -hmm. very honest. He, that yeah. theater school was, was good. He enjoyed it, but his biggest 
education came from the shows he saw in New York. Yeah. And so it, it's like that with everything. But learn, learn it well, and then go see the work and, yeah. and combine those two. Yeah, I don't think there's a right answer to educate yourself. I think you got to do everything. You're always learning. All the things, you know, whether it's education or going to see shows, it's everything you got to do. And that was interesting, Doug, him saying that. Yeah. So what did you learn about art from him? That's a tough question. <laughs> see, uh, I don't consider myself a, an artist, Gabe. I'll just say, like, you've, ha you've interviewed artists on this show all the time. Yeah. I, I don't consider myself an artist. I'm in communications. We, w w whether the mandate is to use abstract art or not, we have to craft something and yeah. get it out there. So but he's talking about art. That's more like my question comes from. Like he's yeah, talking him, about art. Well, what did oh, you learn? About yeah. his art. His or about art in general that I you see. didn't know. Well, I learned that, and he says this at the very end of the documentary, if something means something to you, it might mean something to somebody else. Justin's laughing because it, he heard that. Uh, it might mean something to somebody else. Yeah. And that's a Bruce Springsteen quote. <laughs> but what I learned, for, what he's saying in that is just be honest. Art is being honest. And a lot of people get carried away with that now because... We don't really see that in in the general like in box office films. We don't exactly see people, you know, being as honest as they could be. Or it's kind of sort of the same story over and over again. But what he says is like just be honest and share things about yourself. And yeah, he was like, I like tell that. The truth. Yeah, remember, yeah, I like that. Remember in, in the coffee shop, Laura? He said uh, he was talking about that. A lot of directors say, oh, horror horror as a genre is in now. I'm going to make a horror film. And he's yeah. like, no, just... <laughs> yeah. That's to, that shouldn't be your, your motivation to make something. Make something that, that resonates with you. Mm. Yeah, because that's what art is. It's not, you know, going with the trends. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's like kind of setting your own pace and whatever. It should come from your heart, first of all. And yeah. what you really want to do. Don't look at the trend, like you said. It's uh, he said you know, it. Yes, yeah. and I'm like, it should yeah. be authentic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's what ultimately resonates with people. And that's and uh, yeah, and he said that in the documentary, which I thought was really powerful. Yeah. Nothing stays buried forever, especially not the past. Yesterday is not yet gone. A mystery novel by Gabriel Vega, host of the Very Creative Podcast. Available now, paperback and digital. GabrielVega.com. Buy it now. Yeah. So, Justin, let's just go back to that. So, you don't consider yourself an artist. No, so cool. <laughs> expand on, on that. I don't know. I just, I, you know, I, I have a day job. It's not artistic. It's communications is a weird thing because it, it, it's it goes in between we, we we're all artsy people and we're all jack of all trades but sometimes we're writing tweets and sometimes we're uh, you know sometimes we're uh, writing a news article right. well, journalism is an art but it's not like i'm not an artist because i'm a journalist you know that's all i'm trying to get at so as an artist yeah i mean i guess an artist would would really wanna, interesting an artist would want to go to their next film do I want to make another film? I don't know. Maybe I'll try something else, Nick. You know, like it's, it's a, it's just weird. It's a weird kind of uh, place to be. In that so you field. don't consider yourself an artist after making this film? See, it's a. <laughs> I don't know. I don't <laughs> you're know what to you're say. a director on this film. Director, so we 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 crafted it into something I think is artistic because it right. has moments of depth that go beyond the interview. So that's right. art. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. What do you think, uh, uh, Laura? Is Justin an artist? Yes, because <laughs> let me tell you, before he, I, I took a stab at cutting a trailer, and let me tell you, it was not good. Okay, but that's because I just 
that's it kind of goes back to what we were talking about where like we each have strengths and weaknesses and i'm all for shaping something into a story but to put something into like a 60 minute trailer i just didn't have the headspace for that and i i didn't i tried doing it then i showed it to him and he sent me back something way better like the trailer for this movie is awesome i don't know if you've seen it we could send it to yeah. you it's beautiful yeah. the way the music comes in the way it fades out uh there's a part like just the way the pictures i don't know the way he kind of put everything together just that is like that could be your demo reel justin it's so good i really liked it i would say he's an artist thank you laura thank you're welcome <laughs> Oh boy. The one of the last thing about the film that I wanted to ask you is the credits. Uh the when Justin comes on and then Laura comes on as directors. Yeah. Uh and then the other people after like you have the the pictures is it your grandparents? Yes. Yeah. And what does that mean cuz I I feel like this is very Italian community like it speaks about it and what does what did that mean to you? It was this cute kind of thing I thought of doing, doing it as a kind of a motif in the film. Um, it, again, Victoria, who I mentioned before, she's a talented artist. And I asked her if she can take inspiration from a lot of documents that, so, okay, let me just say thank you to Victoria and Carlo Colombo. Those are the two other main people yeah. on our team who did the research mm -hmm. and helped us out, moral support, everything. They were there during the shoot. So again, the, the team is amazing. Uh, Carlo Colombo has a background in accounting, anything monetary or anything related to business, the contracts we have to go through and all that stuff. He was a great person to, re to revise that. Victoria, uh, so, and, and so Carlo found this website with archives from World War II, um, from an old exhibition in Toronto that dealt with this exact theme, Italian immigration. And it was a huge exhibition where they collected all kinds of archives. I never, I didn't, I never heard of it, but he found it. And in there, you can see like dozens of photos of like um, raw um, letters uh, from, from people writing overseas, uh, photos, pictures, all kinds of stuff. The stuff that had, the stuff that was made of paper had a lot of stamps on it. Col I noticed there's, a, there's a colorful stamp motif going on in this theme. I go, Victoria, can you make a background um, that incorporates these colorful stamps? So you'll see it in the film. That's sourced directly from this amazing exhibit. If you go on our website um, for, for the film, um, Gabe can put a, a, a link in the... Uh, yeah, say it too, because uh, people are going to be listening too. Sure. It's, um, well, it's bit.ly, bit.ly, that URL shortening, bit.ly slash TWAS film. TWAS should be in all caps to get to the site. And it stands for the world's a stage. The world's a stage film, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You could see the link there to look at the archives yourself. The credits so are, are inspired directly by themes of immigration and the actual historical um, archives that we've collected at this exhibition. And yeah, describe the credits, what they look like for people, because people haven't seen the film. The credits uh, include a background with these colorful stamps. The camera pans over them um, to reveal pictures of, uh, at the end anyway, um, the the... The, the, the four people I mentioned on our team and their grandparents. Right. Um, it's a way to connect us to the project in a way that we're saying, yeah, you know, we, we, we're, we're right there, you know, in, in the community. We, we know what, what it's, we know what Vittorio is talking about when he talks about his family. Um, yeah. Great photos. My sister Katrina took great photos for the film as well that relate to um, food and family and my grandmother. Tradition. Um, sorry. Tradition. Tradition, yeah. yeah, all the tradition. And I just wanted to add something about the the credits. I think what really touched me about it, it felt really personal. It was beautiful, honestly. It is personal to us. It is personal to us. It's it's our culture. Yeah, you know? it's uh, it's the one thing we can claim and mm. feel comfortable claiming as that we're just a, a part of it. So I love giving back to my Italian community as as much as I could. And I go, this is this will be my gift to them, if anything. That's how I see it, honestly. I don't know how much I can do going forward or what I'm going to do, but, but, you know, I went to Italian school as a kid uh, every Saturday, right up until secondary five, you know, mm. and, and 
I, I didn't always love it, but I'm grateful that I did that. So I get to connect deep on a deeper level now with the language and all that. Right. And when you when you go to the Casa d'Italia and you and you you spend time in there and you you talk to the employees, you you, you really feel like you're part of something very rich. Yeah. So yeah, the photos are there because we're 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 in it. We we yeah. we're in it, and uh, <laughs> it is personal. Yeah. What about you, Laura? You have to say uh, to that. Yeah, I always like that too. I like that the scenarios Vittorio mentions in the documentary, like the example he gives about his um, his father wanting to enroll his two daughters into French school and being refused. Those are things our grandparents faced. So I like that we juxtapose that. And we said, well, here we are with our grandparents. And I always like when movies kind of reveal something during the credits, uh, something yeah. visual. It kind of brings the audience in closer and it makes yeah. you feel like, oh, wait, I didn't waste my time. This was all for something. And it's all true. It's all honest. So I always like when they do stuff like that, I, I really like Justin's idea again, because he's an artist. So I really <laughs> like his idea to, uh, to bring in our, our family photos. It was cool. You know, See, Justin, you're an artist. Great. There's no going back. <laughs> There's no going back. Oh, and sorry to yeah. cut you off, Justin. Yeah, sure. the, the music, just a quick shout out for the, the score. Oh yeah, that right. that was made for us. So the world's a stage has an original score, and theme it's, song. Yeah, it's a theme song, and it, it was scored by Paul Maffei and Jordan Yasenzaniro. Quick shout out to them; they did a great job. It was, a, it was yeah. amazing, Gabe. That's an interesting story too, actually. Okay, yeah. about that song. Oh. <laughs> You're like, okay, um, no, it was all they they um they sent me a first draft of a song. I'm like, you know, it's good. It was jazzy. Right, Laura? It was very cool. It was very jazzy. I'm like, that doesn't really sound... Because I'm such a music lover. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> Huge record collection. I love Italian music since, since I was a young kid. I'm like, okay, what, what I would like in this film would be a sort of yeah. a Tarantella kind of accordion style um, song. A nice upbeat piece. And then they came back with this theme song. Yeah. And talk about the, the sum... Talk about the film being greater than the sum of its parts. The music, the visuals, and all that combined, but the music is a big part of it. And their song was amazing. Yeah. Because For people listening, by the way, fun. Justin has uh, Elvis, Michael Jackson, and a bunch of vinyls yeah. on, on his wall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You might want to swap out the Michael Jackson one. Justin. And then Laura has the Beatles and uh, a guitar. Yeah. yeah two that's... musical people, eh? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, uh, that's my boyfriend's side of the office. My boyfriend, who made the the theme song for the world's a stage, yeah. yeah, that's this is his recording studio. It's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. See, when when yeah. when, you, when you know cool people, you get stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think it worked for for this. Like you, you guys should keep working together because this partnership works really well. I, Thank I you, feel. Gabe. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so when will be, will we be able to see this movie and where the movie streaming now? Yeah. Follow the link that Gabe provides. Check out the link below. Check out. Yeah. It, it'll be there. <laughs> or if you're listening, we'll, we'll put it in the description of the podcast and, uh, yeah, you can check our website. You want to repeat that, uh, for a second? Yeah, sure. Bit.ly slash T W A S film. T-W-A-S in capital letters. Perfect. Okay. Uh, to finish off. It's I over already? With... Did you want to talk about anything else? Oh, man. We could go on and on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jeez. No, I don't no, know. I'm asking. You're, do you want to talk about something else? I, I don't mind. I'm just asking you. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I do that with every guest. Uh, we played this feel-good game. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just going to ask, how do you deal with anxiety with project, creative projects? Um, you can include this one in if you want. Anxiety with creative projects? Like when a project's giving me anxiety? or Yeah. For, for example, when I'm writing, I think about my writing when I'm not writing and I don't sleep at night and blah, blah, blah. It's, uh, it's a lot of anxiety. So how do you deal with that? with your creative projects or creativity or whatever. 
will I get at least one thing done per day? And that could be something very small, like emailing Justin about something that's on my mind or sending an email to somebody else. But I'm inching closer to the end of the project by doing that. And as long as I do one thing per day, I know that day didn't go to waste. Therefore, I feel a little better. So yeah, yeah. that's what I do. Do you think about it a lot? All the time. It's yeah. all I think about. Yeah, mm-hmm. same. What about you, Justin? See, the, the, the project, this project didn't give yeah. me so much anxiety. I mean, you're not an artist, so you, there's no anxiety for so, you. <laughs> Just, I'll tell you what. Yes, the month of May. The <laughs> month of May. Come on. I, I, I appreciate Laura because she's calling you out on your bullshit. Uh, the, um, this, this project had no deadline, right, Laura? I mean, it did. Well, yeah, but we still <laughs> wanted to get it done. Yeah, I know. So, so but okay. So my, 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 my response is if it's important enough for, for you as, as a job, you're, as, as a creative work that you're making, if it's really resonating with you, it's important with you and it's personal to you, it shouldn't give you too much anxiety. You should be feeling it and you should be making it um, in, yeah. a, in a way that, you know, that, that, that you, you shouldn't feel stressed about, about doing it. But if you run into problems and... If you run you into problems, fix, I, agree. Uh, I ran into a lot that. of problems. Yeah. Are you kidding? Right? So when you run into problems, you know... You never wanted to give up. No, yeah. no, 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 no. No? Okay. It never crossed our mind. No. No, no, no. That's for sure. I mean, the problems were technical in nature. Mm. And eventually you solve them. Mm. You, you find a way. Yeah. These days, there's so, much, there's so many resources. Use the resources at your disposal, whether it's whether it's emotional support or technical support, but it's all online. Seriously, yeah. check it out <laughs> because there's a lot more at your fingertips now than ever before. Yeah. And if that is not enough, reach out to somebody, right? Yeah. Reach that, out to somebody. That's really true. Tell them how you feel, especially during these times, right? That's giving me anxiety <laughs> more than yeah. the film is these times. That, that did, you feel, that. did you feel that because you were doing it with someone else that, that the pressure, some pressure was off because you had a partner to rely on or? Yeah. Cause Laura had my back all the time. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah, I and felt called that you out on too. your bullshit. <laughs> 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 no, look, because no, know your strengths and know your weaknesses. Don't partner with somebody that has the same strengths as you or you'll just butt heads all the time. So what happened yeah. here? We have different strengths and weaknesses. So yeah. Laura was good at certain things. And I was good at other things. And together and we... You're not an artist. <laughs> because... <laughs> for, for the people listening, Justin just wagged his finger like a 90-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, Justin doesn't feel stress or anxiety at all. Not for this. Not. If it was a project that I did not want you know because sometimes you gotta you gotta pay the bills and the projects you're working on are not yeah. exactly resonating with you okay mm. great well have a, a you routine. feel you have less anxiety when you don't care about them as much i always care about my projects but the ones that are the ones that you got to do to pay the bills that aren't exactly your choice right yeah. but i'm talking about anxiety not care oh yeah anxiety affects everybody for sure so <laughs> Justin, <laughs> yeah. the question is if you don't care about a project do you have more anxiety or less if i don't care about a project do i have more anxiety if you're doing just doing it for the yeah. money and you really yes. don't really care the answer is yes and to cope with that can i tell you my coping strategy you're giving me anxiety here you're giving me anxiety gate <laughs> <laughs> have a schedule waiting my, my questions <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry yes the answer is yes the coping strategy is have a schedule and a routine so that you can leave it be during the off hours and only work on it during the on hours we're all laura are you working from home now you are right yes as am you know i this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why are you asking me that you know that I I wanted to, geez, it's for the magic of, of podcast. I'm asking. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this all the time in season. All the uh, time. You know what we do? We laugh a lot there. 
That's how we cope really with our good. anxiety. We yeah, that's laugh. really good. Oh, there you go. Time. Jeez, laugh a lot. Nothing is yeah. that serious that you can't laugh about it. Yeah, right. I should start working with someone then because I do it all alone, and that's what gives me the most anxiety. I don't yeah, have. No, it's true. Talk. It's true. What that's I was going to say about working from home is that you know a nine to five. If you're doing that, stick to that. Turn off the computer yeah. after five. That would be my. That, that that's how I'd cope with that. Yeah. There's no need to work overtime when it just yeah. when it's not taking a break can make you work more efficiently than rushing through something. Yeah, that's cool. All right, we got enough out of that anxiety. <laughs> what I do, me, I watch feel good stuff when I'm I've had enough of my things. So uh, I'm gonna ask Justin and don't evade that question. It's a good, it's a fun question. Uh, what's your feel good movie? I know Laura's answer, isn't that? Oh fun? my god, I'm so excited! I'm so happy. This is a question. Sorry. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, slapstick comedy. Okay. So, Mr. Bean, I'll just watch that all the time. I can watch yeah. that over, and over again and laugh. Yeah. That has always so, been resonated with me since I was a young kid. And so the movies, because we're talking about movies right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the, the one with the art. Okay. When Mr. Bean. <laughs> Laura knows this one. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Mr. Bean's Holiday? No, the one before that. The one from the 90s. Oh, I think. Bean. Bean. It's just called Bean. It's okay. just called Bean. Great title. Really great title. And essentially what happens is Mr. Bean is responsible for a high-profile work of art, which he ruins yeah. and goes to great lengths to resolve. And hilarity ensues. Uh, a that's lot of really sitcoms. Great. It's really yeah, good. All right, Laura, you're excited about your answer. Yes. Feel good movie. Okay. So um, there's a movie called Troop Beverly Hills. It's uh, It has bad reviews. It's from 1989. It's yeah. a comedy. And it's about a Beverly Hills housewife who is doing nothing with her life and decides <laughs> to lead a troop of girls. Like, <laughs> and I'm just underdog girls and it's just that classic underdog story of these kids that are going nowhere and they get direction from this beverly hills housewife justin's laughing because he watched it with me we used to watch movies in cjep when things were really boring and nothing was happening and you know gabe the schedule in cjep i don't know if, uh, did you go to cjep here or or dawson yeah One dawson year. yeah it's long days right yeah yeah long days with big breaks so we watch movies sometimes this is right. one of them yeah. she pres- introduced me to and i'm forever grateful it's by no means perfect <laughs> <laughs> there it's not the best writing it's not the best acting right. but gabe it makes me so happy i don't know yeah. like just the fluorescent colors and it's the 80s and there's just like I don't know, like this leading woman who wants to get her act together. Something about it. I guess I watched it at the right age too. And I just always really, it, it'll make me so happy. But there's also another movie that it's, it, it's actually one of my favorite movies. And that's a Goofy yeah. movie. A movie <laughs> where, where yes. Goofy and Max take a road trip to Los Angeles yes. to go to the Powerline concert I love it. It's great. It, it just again makes. How me do you feel so about the, the second one? I don't feel the same about the second one. <laughs> I it's just not. I I don't like. I don't know. Sort of. It's like a two thousand and one like awkward transitioning period type of movie. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was like straight to video. Disney didn't really yeah. market it too much. Um, it's uh, uh, basically Goofy's son that goes to college. Or... He goes to college, but then like Goofy ends up taking yeah. courses for some reason. <laughs> so I was, weird, but I it's so know, funny. Like, it, it is still funny, but like, where's Roxanne, who we like grew to oh, yeah. from the first yeah. one? She's not. Yeah. She just disappeared. There's like no explanation. Yeah. I hate when movies do that, but yeah. anyway, <laughs> so those are my two answers. Why he could, so, he could so move repeat on. Uh, the the two movies: a Goofy movie and. Troop Beverly Hills. I think it's on Netflix. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm watch that after. Okay. All right. All right. TV a, you know, show, Justin. Feel good TV show. What do you, do you want to say? Yeah. Nothing. Troop Beverly Hills has a great soundtrack. It has a Beach Boys song 
that's like killer. Just wanted to put that. It's up. called yeah, make it twice. big. Yeah, make it big, and that's be been twice. our lifelong uh, mission is yeah. to make it big. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> TV show, TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, TV uh, show. Feel good TV show. Oh my God. Well, you know, since I was, again, I'll, I mentioned sitcoms before, I watched King of Queens a lot growing up, and I still watch it today with my, with my family. We love putting that on and laughing at the same old jokes over and over again, but I think it's great. I didn't right. know that. Oh, yeah. Cool. I would say Saturday Night Live. It makes me so happy. Uh, I bother everyone with my favorite Just skits. Just laughing again. <laughs> Yeah, we, we discussed it regularly. Uh, this is okay. how this is how we became friends. It's just by like talking about Saturday Night Live. This is how this partnership started. Right. So yeah. <laughs> Saturday okay, Night so Live. he's not laughing at you. He's laughing at because you you both yeah. understand each other. Yeah, or maybe he is laughing at me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Justin is always laughing. Yes, he is. Feel good song now. Oh. Okay. Um, am I going first? Yeah, go for whoever. Yeah. Okay. So my feel good song is uh, always be my baby from Mariah Carey. <laughs> I don't know why. Again, it's just it something about the key changes and her vocals and the nineties. I love that song. I don't know. I could, it does something to me. My mood will change if I hear that song. And I, I do think it's, you know how when you hear musical key changes, it does something in your brain to the endorphins. That's right. that's what that song does to me. That's good. What about you, Justin? Gabe, it's like asking you to pick your favorite child. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> For me, okay. it is. Are you? Oh my gosh. Well, with all that music behind you, maybe. It's just hard, Gabe. It's hard to pick a favorite song. For me. Um, but it's your feel good song, Justin. Yeah, yeah feel good song. Yeah, okay. Right now, if you've, I know you don't feel anxiety at all, but, uh, no, no. Uh, you know, just if you want to feel good, what do you put on right now? Listen, there's this, there's this Italian artist that I discovered on the, um, you know, those world music collections, those albums for, by the publisher Puto Mayo. Okay, they're these, they have always these colorful, cartoony um, covers. There's one artist there called Giorgio Conte, okay? And any of his songs I'll listen to um, as a feel-good song. Um, he has a live album. One of the songs, Una Giornata al Mare, mm. A Day at the, at, the, at the Sea, is a really beautiful song. Simple, acoustic guitar, and a gravelly Italian voice that reminds me of my grandfather. That's, I think that's one of the things, is that it's, it's got to speak to you. That's what his voice does to me. Transports me somewhere that I can't otherwise be. There you go, Justin. You did it. Beautiful. There you go. Beautiful. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and uh, yeah, check out uh, the links we provided or uh, yeah, check out the description. You'll find the movie. And uh, yeah, check out their website. And thank you so much. Gabe, for, uh, thank you Justin. so much for this thank opportunity. Thank you, Gabe. Tracy. Thanks. Yeah. And also, I, I'm a fan of your podcast. I like well, it a thank lot. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. I'll yeah. be listening. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Great job. Oh, there we go. Oh, we have some we have some audio problem during this Today, podcast. Today it's but, just uh, not been lucky. <laughs> okay. I'll stop recording. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Very Creative Podcast with Gabriel Vega. To find out more, go to gabrielvega.com slash podcast or find us on social media at the very creative podcast. You can also watch the podcast on YouTube. Just search for The Very Creative Podcast and subscribe. Next week on the show, a holiday special with David Marino and Jalen Taylor. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey! Oh, what fun it yeah. is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.